Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to work the Azure Cosmos DB change feed using Azure Functions built with C Sharp. So what I'll do in this video is I'll start off by explaining what the change feed for Azure Cosmos DB is, how we can work with it and what the main features of the change feed are, and then we'll dive into a demo and start consuming the change feed using an Azure function built in C Sharp. Now let's start by going over what the Cosmos DB change feed actually is. Essentially, the change feed in Azure Cosmos DB is a persistent record of changes to a container in the order that they, they occur. Essentially, the change feed will listen to a container in Azure Cosmos DB um, and listen for any changes that occur in that container, and it will output those changes into a sorted list of documents that the changes were made in the order that they were modified. Now, these changes can be processed asynchronously and incrementally, and the output can be distributed across one or multiple consumers for parallel processing. Now, for C-sharp developers, we can work with the change feed either by using Azure Functions or the change feed processor library that comes as part of version 3 of the .NET SDK, and I may do a video sometime in the future on the change feed uh, processor library because it's a little bit more complex to work with but for now we're just going to focus on Azure Functions. Now we can use the change feed in a variety of different ways. We could use it to persist the output of another container in Cosmos DB, um, well the output in one, documents that are inserted into one container and use that to persist that output to another container in Cosmos DB perhaps with a different partition key. We can use it to listen to to listen to a container, um, one of our containers in Azure Cosmos DB, and then copy those documents to an alternative storage solution, such as Azure Blob Storage. Or perhaps we want to utilize the change feed to enable some machine learning workloads that we have running in Azure uh, Databricks. There's a variety of different users that we can actually use the change feed uh, in Azure Cosmos DB for, which makes it really, really powerful. Now, using Azure Functions is by far the simplest option um, that you have in order to consume the change feed. Uh, as you'll see from the demo, all we really need to do is create a function that uses the Cosmos uh, uses a Cosmos DB trigger and connect it to the container that we want to listen to. And then, when changes occur in that con container, uh, our function will be invoked and produce an output that our consumers can can consume. Just to go over some features of the change feed, uh, the change feed is enabled by default. There's no additional setup required, so I don't need to flick a switch on in the Azure portal. I don't need to write an elaborate script. It just comes out of the box. However, at the current time of this video, um, change feed only supports um, or includes uh, inserts or, or updates and updates. Uh, you can capture deletes using soft deletes. You can do a little trick where if you want to delete an item, you can mark it within the document. And then you could use something like time to live on a document to say, hey, expire this document after 10 seconds once, um, once we've marked this as soft deletes. But out of the box, um, the change feed doesn't support deletes uh, quite at the moment. Now, changes to an item uh, appears exactly once with clients. You'll need your clients to manage the checkpointing logic. Only the most recent change for an item is given. So if, you're, if there are intermediate changes to your item within your polling period for a change feed, uh, those might not be available to you when you consume the change feed. Now, the change feed is sorted uh, by the order of modification within each logical uh, partition key value. So if you're running a change feed across multiple partition key values, there'll be no guaranteed order. And there's also no fixed data re retention for which the changes um, are available. So it's not like the change feed is only available to you after, say, five months or six months or 30 days or whatever. It's available to you. You can consume the change feed from whatever point of lifetime of, of your, the particular container that you're going to be uh, using the change feed on. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into a very quick demo. Okay, so here I am in Visual Studio. So basically what I've got here is a simple function that's just going to insert books into a book container that I've got in Azure Cosmos DB. So just take a look at this book model here. All we're doing is within this function is we're just generating a bunch of fake books based off this model. So I've got an ID, title, author, price, and genre. I've got this book repository class that's going to insert it into 
a book container that's partitioned by ID. So if I go into Azure Cosmos DB, there's my book container in this books database, and it's partitioned by ID. Um, and the one, essentially what we want to do here is create a new function within our function application. We have a Cosmos DB trigger that will use the change feed to listen to our book container as items are being inserted into this book container and then copy the items that are being inserted into this container and insert those documents into this books by genre co container which is petitioned by the genre. So it's fairly straightforward so go back into Visual Studio I'm going to create a new function. So create new Azure function, I'm going to say insert, oh, crazy cat blocks, insert book by genre. There we go, click add. And here what we want to look for is when we uh, get this um, pop-up window saying new Azure function, um, we want to look for a Cosmos DB trigger, and there it is. And I'll just click add for now. And before we start configuring our, our uh, trigger for our function, I'm just going to turn this into a non-static class because what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I've got this book repository class which handles all the logic for inserting um, or just interacting with my Cosmos DB database. So I'm just going to inject that as a dependency. So iBook or private read-only iBook repository going to import the using statement, just make, put underscore there, then type ctor, tab tab, to get my constructor, use ibook repository as an input parameter, there we go, cool. So now what we need to do, now that I've injected my book repository interface, is configure our trigger. So what we've, when we created this, um, created this function, it generated a template for us. So it looks like we need to provide a database name, a collection name. So we need to actually tell um, our Azure function which collection to listen to. Then we need to provide a connection string setting. So that's the name of the setting, not the actual connection string itself. And then we've got a lease collection name and I'll explain what that is in a little bit. So if I go back to Cosmos DB, I can see that the database that this books container that we want to listen to is in a database called books DB. Just type that in collection name. It is books. Yep. I'm going to get that right. And then for this function, what I'm doing so I go into my startup class here is for my settings, I've just got a local dot settings dot JSON file, which I'm going to use to add my um, configuration settings. So what I've got here is I've got a configuration setting called Cosmos DB connection string. I'm used, I'm instantiating a singleton um, uh, instance of my Cosmos client so I can reuse it throughout all the functions. So I just put connection string setting, set that to Cosmos DB connection string. Now let's go and let's talk a little bit about this lease collection. So what this lease collection will do is it will manage the checkpointing of your change feed. So the change feed uses a polling system. So we will essentially poll this books container for any changes. And essentially this will keep track of um, what was the last item or where whereabouts in the change feed. Um, yeah, what was the last item processed by the change feed? Now, as you can see, if I go back into Cosmos DB, just minimize that, we don't have a lease collection um, available to us. But what we can do within our Azure function is we can add another parameter to our tri trigger called create lease collection if not exists. And we can set that to true. So essentially, every time uh, this function gets evoked, it's going to check to see if the lease collection exists. And if it doesn't, it will create a new one. Um, but if it does, it will just um, it won't do anything. We can do a bunch of things for our lease collection. We can actually, if I just start typing lease, we can put a prefix on it 
prefix on it so when we actually insert um we can actually use the same lease collections to manage a bunch of different change feeds if we want to and then we can just differentiate between those different um change feeds by adding a prefix to that um we can store it in a different um cosmos db account entirely using the coll lease collection string setting we can stick our lease collection in a different database if we wanted to and we can provision throughput or we can by default when you create a new collection uh, for your leases um leases container it'll be set at 400 but here we could set it to 500 600 if we want to remember it's like a normal collection um in cosmos db so you do need to add it in increments of um a hundreds but let's let's just leave that for now so that should be everything that we need to um, configure um, our change feed function. And as you can see here, we've got this um, I read only list. So essentially what will happen is every time we poll the change feed for changes um, in this book's container, it will out, um, persist the output to that in this I read only list um, for input. And just before we move on there is another thing that we can do with the change feed so essentially with this function we can start from the beginning so essentially we can just tell this function okay from the start of life for this particular container i want you to produce to um get all the changes that have occurred within this book's container or so here with the feed poll delay what we can do with this is essentially it's the time in milliseconds for the delay between polling for um, polling cha new changes on the feed itself. So by default, this will be five seconds, um, but we can configure that for longer if we want. We'll just leave it as the default for now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a try catch statement here. I'll just do some simple logging. If anything does go wrong, um, ex dot message. I'll just log out the message. I won't do anything fancy. But within the try, essentially what we want to do is, if this input is input uh, list is not equal to null and the counter documents is greater than zero, we essentially want to do something with the documents within that list. So remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to just copy documents that are being inserted in this books container and we're just going to um, insert it in this books by genre but we're going to be um, petitioning it by the genre of the book instead of the id so go back into visual studio what i want to do just remove that boilerplate code i want to deserialize the document into the book object that I showed you earlier. So JSON convert.c to serialize object book. I need to import that. So it'll be, ah, before I do that, I actually need to iterate through this input list. So for each item in input, just um, then I'm gonna deserialize this item actually type that out I won't copy and paste it item dot to string fantastic cool so that will um, that will take my incoming item and just um, deserialize that into this book object and then what I want to do is I want to insert that book document into that container so if I go into this book repository class I've actually got a method here, insert book by genre. It's going to take the incoming book and create a new item within this genre container with the petition key of genre. So if I go back into my Azure function, what I want to do is await book repository, insert book by genre, just insert the book. And I'm going to have to make this asynchronous and import the using statement system.threading.tasks. That should be fine. And then just for my peace of mind, I'm just gonna log information. I'm just gonna say inserted book 
ID, just some really basic rudimentary logging. Dot ID, fantastic. Just tidy this up. Okay, so just to recap, I've configured my Cosmos DB trigger. So we're gonna be listening to this book's collection and I've provided my connection string, told it which database it lives in, I'm creating a new lease collection. And then every time new items are being added into um, this list, if there are items in there, I'm just gonna, um, for each item within that input list, I'm gonna deserialize it into a book object and then insert it into my books by genre container. All right, let's, fire this up and for this what I'm going to be doing is I've got this um, HTTP trigger here I'm just going to make a post request I'm just going to use postman to make that post request so wait for my function to start up and I should once everything's all good to go provided everything's good to go yep so I've got my two functions there. So I've got my insert books function, which is my HTTP, T, HTTP trigger. And I've got this insert book by genre Cosmos DB trigger function ready to go. So before I invoke it, actually, what I'm going to do, go back into my change feed function, just going to put some breakpoints there. I'll just put a breakpoint there just in case an exception does get thrown if I have done anything wrong. So go back into Postman, make sure that's the right endpoint. Yes, it is. Click send on that. So open that up. Hopefully it gets invoked. Okay, it took my function a little long to, longer to run. I'm running Camtasia and Visual Studio on this machine, which is probably not a not a great thing for my computer, but anyway, so we've hit this breakpoint here. So we've got changes in our um, in our container. So I've got my so let's step through this. So so I've got my book model. So that's been deserialized successfully. Now I'm going to insert it into Cosmos DB and log that. And yeah, so. That's now iterating through all of this um, this list of um, different um, changes that have uh, occurred in our books container. So I'm just going to remove that. Just press continue. Let that run. So it's inserting all the books happily away. Looks like it stopped. So I'm just going to stop debugging. And now if I go back into Azure Cosmos DB, hopefully just give that a little refresh. So there's my leases container for books DB. And what I think I've done here, yep, yeah, just wanna make sure that's correct. So there's my items that have been inserted into this books container here. So it's petitioned by ID. And if I look into my books by genre container, we can see those items have been inserted into this books by genre container, but they're now petitioned by genre. Awesome. And the great thing about this is we could have multiple change feeds um, or multiple consumers for uh, particular change feeds. So you can set up um, different um, consumers to consume the same change feed, which is really, really cool. So hopefully this um, like very, very basic demonstration just shows you how simple it is to actually um, use Azure Functions to connect to, um, to the Cosmos DB change feed with just a few lines of code. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll see you all next time.